We have teenage children. I, myself, I have a 19-year-old son. Have not been sleeping since day before yesterday because of this issue. And women have been coming to me. They have been phoning me and texting me that they are scared. They don't know what to do. We, the mothers of teenagers, in, in this W15, we are so scared. What can we do? What can we do, Your Excellency? Our children are human beings. They don't talk. Even when we are driving, people will make the sign on us. Even when we bring our car and horn to them to leave the road, they will do the sign to us. We are so scared at the moment. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do, Your Excellency. We are we are putting everything at your full step. We want you to do something concerning this. We actually, um, our intention is to consult with the um, government on um, how to prevent this kind of occurrence in the future, because what is important is a reorientation, you know, on um, both sides. Um, for preventive measures and for people to begin to appreciate each other. You know, in this contemporary world, there's so much diversity and they talk about the global, uh, global village. It means that everybody belongs to that village. But the problem I have in this case is that a criminal is a criminal. If anybody that is 38 years old, if it is true that this is what happened, then that means that person must have criminal intentions or criminal inclinations. But I believe, I believe that with this outrage that government will do something about it. On our part, we're going to um, um, take it up from here and see what can be done to continue to foster the relationship between us and the Irish people, which I believe has been very, very uh, cordial. A, a TD and a deputy and a member of the parliament here in Dublin West where we have seen more change than most parts of Ireland. So we're getting used to working together and that's why ID and myself are here this evening with many from the community who have been working together because they are so shocked at this terrible, terrible tragedy. And the question as you say is how we can work together, whether it is through our schools, through our sports, through our local policing, we have to build up from the grassroots, from the population, on the ground. We have to respect each other. We have to follow the rules, not just the rule of law, but the rule of common humanity, which says that every man is a brother and sister of every other man, and that we should do as we are done unto. That is the basic message of all humanity, and that applies to Ireland as much as to any other country. So let's all pledge ourselves in the presence of this family who have suffered so much. Let us do one thing. Let's celebrate the achievement that people have made in this country, in working, in setting up businesses, in being part of this country, in standing for elections, doing all the other things that are going on here. And let's keep working at that and building up our community and putting terrible deeds like this I'm very privileged to be here, even though a very sad occasion today, to support all the different ethnic backgrounds and multiculturalism that is now Ireland. Uh, as a very new Minister for Integration and Equality, it will be my brief to make sure that everybody in Ireland, whether newcomers or indigenous Irish people, that this is an equal society, one that people can feel happy to work in, live in and recreate in, and that integration will be a smooth and hopefully peaceful transition for all the newcomer Irish who come to live in our shores. And my department door will be open to all communities and there will be no place for racism on this island. We want no covert or overt racism in Ireland and I will be doing my very best to make sure that the strength of diversity will be a hallmark of my new ministry and it will be a pleasure to meet with all the communities working with each and every one of you. No matter what background you are from, my door will be open to make sure that this ministry promotes multiculturalism as a strength in the Ireland of today. Thank you. Yeah, I think the solidarity is wonderful. It shows that um, it's the beginning of uh, a better future. You know, we have to condemn violence and racism in all their entirety.
you know, people have to coexist. Whether we like it or not is a fact of life. In every part of the world, in Nigeria, in the whole of Africa, in the whole of Europe, America, people are living side by side these days and um, beginning to appreciate each other for what they mean and identifying the differences. But then there's a unity in diversity. You know, the important thing is for people to have a safe environment where everybody has confidence, where children can move freely. And um, I also think it's important to address the fundamental issue of promoting tolerance among people. A tribute to Toyesi as well. I know some of Toyesi's friends are here. Can you just put your hands up by show of hands? We're here because we're paying respect to Toyesi who we lost on Good Friday. So we're just going to go into the second segment of the show. I'm wanting to, you know, invite two people to the couch today. Do you want to introduce yeah. them in? Ladies and gentlemen, our next guest, she's the CEO of IACI, which is the Integration of African Children in Ireland. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome with me, Mrs. Yemisi Ojo. We also have an activist politician. His name is Mr. Patrick Mafoso. Thank you very much for joining us today. We know both of you are very involved in the community because you're a polit political activist and you work with the youths integrating an island. And it's a very sad thing that's actually happened you know, to us recently, we lost one of our own, which is a very, very sad thing to happen. But before we go into that, I just want you to quickly talk about, for people who don't know what you do specifically, you know, in um, Ireland, what, what you do here. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, and thanks for having us um, as part of this panel. Uh, my name is Yami Siojo, the founder and the president of IACI, the Integration of African Children in Ireland. Uh, the organization started uh, June 2003 because um, there was a gap in terms of our youth and children integrating as of 2003. There were loads of things for mothers, parents uh, to do, but you found out that youth and children do not have that space in which they can come together and you know, talk about issues that affect them. So that was how IACI was born on the 1st of June. 2003 and since then we've been doing loads of activities to bring about integration talks and also the awareness of the different culture we now have in the Republic of Ireland. We organize activity throughout the course of the year to uh, promote cultural awareness and also integration among you know immigrant youth and as well with their Irish counterparts. Okay thank you very much. Yeah. And what about you Patrick? What do you do? I do a lot of things. Uh, they all know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I, I arrived here in 2001 to work on a work permit. Um, in South Africa, I was just a political activist for the ANC. Uh, we used to be, we used to run ANC from the on, on the ground. You know, we used to organize for the ANC in South Africa. And when I came to Ireland, I didn't anticipate or even see myself speaking here with you because I didn't really want to go back to there. You know, but. Uh, in 2002, I discovered that there was a lot of exploitation at workplaces, um, immigrants being exploited, not being paid the right wages, and of course, um, also racism raising is ugly head. Uh, people being assaulted, people being attacked, um, racist abuse, and all that kind of stuff. So, as an activist, I couldn't just help it. I can't just sit back there when I see vulnerable people being abused. So, that's when I started. Uh, um, fighting for immigrants, and that's what I'm doing today, and that's what I'll do until I die. So you deal, you deal with all immigrants, not just the South Africans, you deal with the... Nigerian. Yeah, I mean, not only immigrants as well, I mean, okay. even Irish people as well, uh, that oh, are abused right. at workplaces. I actually represent them at the, tribunal, at the Equality Tribunal, at the Labor Relations Commission, so this is not all about, uh, this has got nothing to do with uh, wherever you're coming from. Yeah. Even when we encourage immigrants to join the trade unions um, in 2002, 2003, most of them, especially from Eastern Europe, were exploited from Ukraine, from Poland, whatever. So it's not to do with nationality. It has got nothing to do with that. And people that knows what I'm doing will tell you exactly 
that yeah. I fight on behalf of all immigrants, including the working class in Ireland okay. and the travelers as well, because they are vulnerable. Yeah. Now, what we want in Ireland, we want um, racist abuse to be actually criminalized. A person should be taken to court for abusing another person. That's it. <laughs> What, what, we all know what happened to Toya C. What do you actually think about that situation? Um, I would first of all like to use this uh, opportunity to send um, uh, our condolences to the parents of uh, Toya C. Uh, it was a big uh, blow. Um, parents everywhere felt it. It really doesn't matter where you are coming from. When a child's life is taken away suddenly in that manner, a child which has um, a whole lot going for him, um, a law abiding young man with lots of skills and um, you know it was a big blow. I remember where I was, I was just numb, I couldn't you know really move, I, tears was just running through my eyes because um, uh, Toya C on that day has a lot of parents who were not really his biological parents but a lot of parents everywhere, people came out and there are some people still in, the, in their closet now still feeling the pain and I felt that uh, it shouldn't have happened and um, youth everywhere were in pain. I received some phone calls due to the work, nature of the work that I do and see what are you going to do about this, what are we going to do? You know, um, I felt sad. The thing is that when you feel that pain and sadness, what you do is that you get even by taking action. Uh, taking action on the 10th of um, April in which there was a rally. I felt that was a good, a, a good move. You know, um, my message at this point is that what we did on the 10th, what happened on the 10th of April should not be the end. There should be a continuation because that's one thing, when a tragedy happens, it kind of brings people together. It should not be only that time. There should be a continuation to make sure this type of a thing does not happen again. And you don't get even by, um, by uh, retaliating with evil. With, evil or with bad situation. You get even by thinking of what step we're going to take as individuals and as a group. You know, together we stand, what we can do to make sure this does not happen again. And when uh, opportunities like this come, such as the Perot show that is having this uh, talk show today, people should be able to come and give their views and, and come together. In a year's time, are we going to forget so you see? You know, uh, um, how do we move from here? How do we start to heal the wounds of the youth? That really matters to me because a lot of youth are still very, very sad. Uh, like uh, Nofe said a while ago, some really want to take action on a negative note. But you know, as a youth officer and also as a parent, I would say uh, um, eye for eye is not the situation. Let's think about the way forward, how we can deal with this because um, if we want to do it eye for eye, you know, um, it, it will not be okay. You know, let's, let's think of a situation where we can move forward. And please, um, if you experience or you are experiencing any form of racism, report it. Call your police station. Let there be data. Let there be statistics. Because when you call, go to any Gada station now and say, how many people have been reporting any racist attack, they don't really have a good number, whereas it happens on a daily basis. When we have this statistic from the guards, we'll be able to follow up with the policy makers and say this has to be done. Okay. I can say to you categorically right now, we do not have a good immigration policy or anti-racism policy. It is there in paper, but it's not being affected. You know, I would like to use this moment to please appeal to our parents as well. You know, parents have a great deal of responsibility in terms of our children and youth. You know, um, know where they are at a particular time. You are not on your own. Some people will say, I'm on my own. I don't deal with anybody. As long as you are a parent, you are not on your own. Because what happens to TRC happens in every home in this Republic of Ireland. Because some of us have teenagers that are the same age with TRC. If not that, some of us are parents. You know, we, we can't really feel the pain until, you know, one experiences it. Please, let's know where our children are at a particular moment. And at the same token, let's have this connection with our neighbors. Even if we are not going to be there, let's have the backup of making sure we know where our children are. Well, Tom was just a good guy. His sense of humor was just fantastic. He never took like life seriously. He always wanted to mess and make people laugh. 
and like all I want to say is just like rest in peace to Yeah, m my name is CJ. Uh, basically, on that rally that day, I don't really know Toyosi, but I felt like just people take the dude that took his life that day. The day was just like I, 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 I felt so sad and I felt so grieved. Like, cause some some dude was asking me, "What would you do if you met this guy? Like the guy that killed him?" Like at that spot, I said, "Listen, the truth is." I know I don't know him, but we are brothers. It doesn't matter the color, you get me? I know it was, can't the people always say it's a racist attack, but I don't believe things. Things like that do happen, but to me, I don't go by color, you get me? But I felt so down and I told him, I said, listen, if I see that dude right now, I'm not, I don't know what to do with him, you get me? Because I probably just lose my temper and just, I don't know, you get me? I, but I really felt down, you get me? It's just something that I felt like it shouldn't be happening. At all, you get he was my brother's friend, and you know, he, you know, I, he, the the thing is, Torres could have been anybody's. It could have been any 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 boy, any black boy, you know that. So it's a case of I know his friends are here now. They might not want to talk because they, for whatever reason, they don't want to talk. But from what, what I've heard about Torres, Torres was always happy. He always looked after people. He always looked up for people. Especially my brother. My brother would tell me that he looked up after him and, you know, he was always smiling. He always had a smile on his face. Um, he was a happy-go-lucky boy. Sport was his life, you know. He wanted to make his mom proud, you know. He, he, he was dedicated to football. And I think what we need to show is that even though he was dedicated to football, football isn't the only thing that, or sports and music is not the only thing that the youth can, should be able to relate to. There's so much you can do with yourselves. Um, just show dedication. Show if you if if you're good at maths. I'm not good at maths. Ask my brother. I get a headache when I see numbers. But if it's something that you're particularly good at, that you have a passion for, show dedication like Toyosi showed dedication to football. That's that's the message that we're trying to tell you guys. Show dedication to something. Don't just be all, all about football. If you can show half of the dedication that Toyosi showed to football or to people generally, his family and his friends, the way he looked out for you guys. If you can show half of that in little things that you do or things that you're passionate about, you will see how far you'll go. So I know you guys don't want to talk right now, but you guys owe it to Torosi. Like the papers are not talking about Torosi anymore because, I mean, the papers are just there to report it. But you guys are the ones that played with him every day, you know, spent time with him, texted him, cussed him out, you know, had fights with him, whatever you guys did with him, you guys are the ones who are supposed to carry on his legacy, carry on, make sure that he's not forgotten. You're supposed to make sure he's not forgotten. Hi, um, I'm Jean Donahue. I'm not um, politically involved. Um, I'm not on any committees. I'm just a mother. Um, I live in Town, which I have to say it has its cracks, as every area does. But up until this act, we have had a very... This heinous crime is committed. We, we have and do have a good community. Um, the kids are great. I mean, they get up to mischief, but they are very, very good. Um, and it is a lovely area to live in. I've lived there for eight years. Um, I think the thing as well from Toyosi that we have to learn out of what happened to him... First of all, the two men that committed this crime were not from our community. They came into our community and committed this crime and shattered what peace we did have and stole a lovely young man's life who had so much potential. And that was one of the reasons why um, I helped with Morris from the, the principal of our Educate Together school to set up a trust fund um, that we can raise money to help the family and also, as discussed earlier, um, set up some sort of memorial that will hopefully go on for years and years to come and possibly even in a hundred years be the memorial cup that is still there for the lesson that we learned as a community. As an Irish woman, I have to say that you know, integration in Ireland is definitely needed. It is something that we're in the first sort of infancy. <laughs> we're in the infancy of it. Um, you know, 15 years really ago, we had very little immigrants into Ireland or in, in, in ethnic community in Ireland. Um, and now it, our borders are open, which all around the world. And I hope as a parent, I can teach my children that 
integration is good and it's a sign and these are the lessons we have to move into. Um, I know our banks have let us down, our government has let us down over the last two years. All I ask for is please, and particularly to Toys Friends, as a community, let's not let each other down. Let's, as a community and as people who live in Ireland and in Dublin, and as mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, um, and friends, hold each other's hands and say, we're here, and we care, and we'll look out for each other. Everybody in this place, can you please look at that dude over there, the, the, the guy, the poster, just look at him and see. Does he look like someone you would want to kill? No. Obviously no. The, why would you want to kill him? The only reason you want to kill him is because of racism. And why would two full-grown men, adults, be fighting a small kid? The only answer you're going to get is racism, isn't it? And, and what I'm trying to say is that racism is not dead. But we can walk towards making it die. You understand? And yeah, as a youth, I believe we as a youth don't have a voice in Dublin. Do everybody think that? Because I, I feel like the committee or whoever is in charge never listen to what we got to say or our expressions. And also, I just want to say to all youth, let's try and make a difference. Let's not fight violence against violence. Let's try and make a difference. Doesn't team make a difference. No? Yeah. Well, hello. And um, Tayos is in the same school as me, Hartstell. He's a lovely guy to hang out with. He's like, whenever you're down, he brings, he just like, cheers you up. Every morning you see him, he's just playing football. He's a football freak. He's well known in school, and I just want to say, like, tribute to him, like, may his soul rest in peace. One last point for the youth, please. You have your whole lives ahead of you. You are beautiful and wonderfully made. Regardless of your color, don't let anybody tell you differently. Once again, you are beautiful and wonderfully made. Don't let anybody provoke you to the extent of taking weapons to school or to, to anywhere, to any social garden. Because you have that one man up there that is watching over you night and day that never sleep nor slumber. You know, this message, if this is the only thing you take out of this place, yes, you're going to feel pain in your heart. But what to your see we want for you is that continue to pray for his soul and move on. Work for the just cause that will bring about justice concerning what happened to him. My Not name is David Arowolo. As, um, I'm the CEO of um, Heritage Confectionery, the Heritage Parade. Um, everything has been said, uh, both now and when the incident happened. But I want the youth of today, particularly the youth in Ireland, to know one thing, and I want them to go into statistics, that there's only one tenth of racism in Ireland. When you compare racism all over the world. America, which is a leading figure all over the world, experienced it. They are still experiencing it. When you look at President Obama, after he has won the election, his lives were threatened. And that is to show you that some people did not even accept him. And the only way you youth is to respond positively to these killing. And the only way you can respond positively is to do things very unique into the society where you find yourself. So please, please, it is not by retaliation. It is not by feeling that you are in a, in a society that they don't like you or they, they call you nigger. No, this is not about it. It is about you yourself contributing positively into the society yeah. and letting them to know that you are somebody. My name is April. Um, I didn't know Toyasi, but as I can hear, um, 
He sounded like a very lovely boy. Um, I just want to say to his friends that you guys should not let like the memories that you had with him like fade away just because he's gone. That like when you guys like get back to school, you should still be talking about him and don't like don't let anyone forget about him. And I want to say to all of us that um, even though like we didn't know him, like there was nothing wrong with him and. There was nothing wrong with his character, but there was surely something wrong with the way he was killed. And yes. I want us to talk for that. So I would advise you as a mother that you should just forget about revenge or retaliation or whatever. And just face what you came to Ireland to do. To make your parents proud, to make Nigeria proud, and make every other person proud. Yeah, as she said there, that's a good point. Violence is not the answer. We're going to highlight that because at the end of the day, violence is not going to bring him back. But this is the time where we need to go hard with everything. So let's just keep that in mind. I just have a few words to tell up to, to the youths. The youths to try and please compose themselves. Sometimes they get carried away with little things. Like yesterday, we went to the shopping mall, coming back, we saw a group of youth yelling at us. You understand? So the youth should please try and compose themselves. They forgot their tradition. We need respect. They should try and respect the elders as well. Please. So we have a neighborhood watch. And what we would do is between 7 and 9 o'clock, you know, consign the residents, they march to the sports where the youth drink. And they do drink in ditches. And uh, my own to surprise, you know, when I walk with them, it's not only Irish youths are drinking. Our own youth are drinking. So what is said at 10 o'clock, uh, 11 o'clock in the day, in the night, during the weekdays, uh, my daughter or my son should be in bed thinking about school the next day. But if that, was not, that was not the case. That was not the case. And then they are drinking. Now, if you look at this, Tayosi died. And I say it's a wake-up call to everybody. More Thank you very much. First of all, uh, I'd like to offer my condolences uh, on my own behalf and on behalf of the wider community to Toyosi's family. I attended the funeral and met them there, but I offer them again and take this opportunity to do that. I also commend the youth here who are uh, angry and frustrated and offended, as are all Irish people, young and old, all thinking, feeling Irish people are as offended and as hurt by what happened to this beautiful young man in Town. We should just, you know, come together as a community and just, you know, keep doing what we do and just stay out of trouble, young youth, and do, if you have any problems, do report it. Don't suffer in silence. So that's what I... Thank you very much. I also want to thank our guests, Yemisi and Patrick, for joining thank us on the chair today. Come in here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank, thank, you. Thank, thank you very much. We just want to thank everyone again. We've come to the end of it, finally. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> thank you very much for encouraging me, and thank you.